um, you know, um, I come from a little small town in, in New Jersey. And I come there and I get there because my grandmother decided to leave uh, the, the fields of South Carolina uh, and begin to clean homes. She was a domestic in New Jersey. And uh, I remember as a child, she would take me to these homes that she would clean. And it would be in these sort of wealthier areas that I ne could never imagine living. And she would sit me at the bookshelves. And some of the people she cleaned homes were, were for some, some of them were the first black women to get PhDs in, in the United States. And they taught at colleges like Temple University and Trent State. And she would say, look at those shelves. I want you, while I'm cleaning, to just look at the shelves. And sometimes there would be other things on them that I would eventually research about, like African masks. There's no way, there's no way I ever could have imagined that looking at those bookshelves would bring me here. And so this <laughs> award, is for Ellery Lewis, who never thought her name probably would be said in a venue like this. This is for um, black folks that over the years had to secret away their language and their desires. I am thankful to the Griffin Trust, to the judges, to the poets for making this possible. Uh, I'm thankful to my grandmother who said to me once in a, I don't know if y'all know what a Nova is, but it's an old broken down Nova that you're gonna sing one day. And I was like, I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> and who knew that she understood the sort of wide breath, the wide sea of singing. So I thank her. I bring her here tonight with me. I would also like to thank W.W. Uh, w. Norton and Jill Belowski for seeing something in the work before it was ever there. I want to thank all those mentors who tussled with me when I was a very, and still am, stubborn writer. I want to thank my partner, Monica Jimenez, who is back in Texas wrangling a seven-year-old, <laughs> a brilliant historian and poet in her own right. And lastly, I want to thank my daughter, who this book wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for her. And what I mean by that is when she was born, I looked down and I said, and I watched her just become. And I said, oh, I want to write a book like that. <laughs> I want to write a book where it just trusts its own beauty. And so I thank you, Naima. If you're listening, you're probably not. <laughs> so I say thank you to everyone, to my agent, uh, Eric Simonoff, to just so many folks that sort of answer the emails at 2 a.m. when I'm racked with doubt. Um, I want to thank y'all for just being here tonight and like being with poetry for this long, right? Like, where do we, like, I think the last time I've seen this many people stay around for something, it was a basketball game. <laughs> so thank you so much.